Hey guys, welcome to the first episode of Unity Tips. Today we're going to be talking about attributes and how they can help you be more productive working on your Unity game, be more organized if you're working in the inspector. There's lots of cool things we can use these for. Um, if you're not familiar with an attribute or what it does or how to make them, there are lots of guides out there. It's not going to be something that we're going to be creating. We're going to be using ones that are predefined in Unity and also a couple that come from the .NET framework that we all know and love. Uh, to define an attribute, just as an example really fast as to how you can do this, you're just going to be using square brackets and you're going to use them as a tag for a property or a class or anything like that. It's going to be a way, it's going to, you're going to decorate your classes or your properties with metadata. It's going to be more data and it's something that adds functionality, adds a layer of functionality to wherever you put it, depending on what attribute you use. And they're really cool. So there's a couple that I want to go over. Uh, there's a, quite a few I want to go over, uh, but we're going to start off with a couple in the slime example here. This is from the RPG series that's currently going on on the channel. Uh, it's a simple RPG. We're in episode, at this point, 13 or 14. So uh, we're quite a ways in, but I was going to take an example from that and show you how we can clean up the inspector really fast. So what I have here is I have just some stats. Not necessarily how it is in the game, but it's just to show you how you can handle doing this. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to create a heading in my inspector to show me that this section is for this and that section is for that, right? So to do that, again, the square brackets and the name of this one is header. And it's going to take an attribute or it's going to sorry, a, a, a parameter or an argument. In this case, a string to title the attribute. I want to call this details. And what that's going to do is if I go back into Unity, once that compiles, it's going to update my inspector and I'll show you what it's going to do. It's pretty cool. It's going to add a details bold label above that section that I put the header at. But let's say I want to separate the stats from the details. One way I can do that, I can do another header or I could do a different attribute called space. This requires no parameters, so it's just space, just like that as easy as that and I want to go back into unity it's going to compile and it's going to add just a bit of space between that section and the other section just like that or I could go back to how I had it before and just do a header and call it stats that also adds a space above the header that's pretty cool uh, let's say that I wanted to take enemy flavor now if we look at this enemy flavors like a description text of whatever the enemy is I have a long string of text here, but we can't see what's happening over here. It's, just, it's all cut off, right? So what I can do is I have a couple of options for this. The first one being I can make a multi-line, which is the exact same thing as the field we currently have, except, you know, multiple lines. So if I were to go back into Unity, let it compile, and there you have it. So now I can take this and make it, oop, I can delete it. I can make it into multiple lines, just as you would expect. Or I can add a text text area attribute, which is going to do something very similar, just slightly different. Once it compiles here, you will see. All right, so that's, that's pretty handy because you're going to be working with text a lot if you're setting up your game to where you have all the data uh, in the inspector. If that's, how you, it's a, if that's your workflow, then you'll be happy <laughs> to start using that instead of typing in those small little text boxes another one i want to show you is let's say i have max health right here and max health can be from zero to 20 but in the inspector currently you can put it as anything you want it can be negative 50 and it can be a thousand so one way i can limit what you can do in the inspector is i can add a range attribute and this takes two parameters it's going to require a minimum and a maximum so I said zero as the minimum and 20 as the maximum. And what that's going to do is not only limit what it can be, but since it knows that it has a range of values, it can add me a little slider in here. So I can just drag this thing to the side or I could just type it in just as before. So that's pretty cool. Another one that's pretty cool, if I get rid of range here, and I could add multiple to just one property. And I can also do it this way. I could take this and backspace it because as in a lot of languages our statements are defined and uh, ended 
using the semicolon, right? It's not the sp it's not space and tabs. It's just when the semicolon comes up, oh, okay, now the next statement. So I can keep them in line like this, or I can go in the next line. So if we were to do it like this and add another attribute, I'm going to go with a tooltip. I want to add some more information to this max health. So I can say, define the maximum health for NPC. So now if I go back into Unity and it compiles, and I go down and hover over max health, I get a tooltip. That's pretty cool. Now I want to show you a couple more things before we go to the next examples. In the inspector, you have all these components, and every component has a little settings tab, and it also has a little book. And this book is a link to the reference for this component. Now, if it's a Unity default component, if I click on this, it'll take me to the Unity docs, and it will bring up information about that component. That's pretty cool. But what if I could define my own? Right, so I want to click on mine and it take me to a help doc or a reference for somebody else that's working on this. I can do that by defining an attribute on the class that's going to define the components. So mine's going to be help URL, and within this, you're going to define a string that is the URL to your help docs for this one component. So mine's just going to be forum.gogamegrind.com. And if you're not a member there and you want to ask some questions, be sure to go there. A little plug for you. And now if I go back into Unity and I let it compile, once it's done and I click on this book, it'll go to forum.gogamegrind.com. That's pretty cool. Now how about this? This slime, this enemy, I know has a slime component on it. But one thing I need to know is it only has one slime component on it. There's no reason to have two slime components on this. It will break things. I can't, I can't have that. And it could happen. I could already have one added and I could drag another one over without realizing it. Now I have two on there. Then I get some weird bug later on that I can't figure out. One way I can circumvent that without, without doing anything major is just add an attribute to this class that's going to define the component. And it's going to be called disallow multiple components. So now if I go back into Unity and I take slime, there's already a slime over here, and I drag it, drop it on this, there is an error. Pretty cool, right? So one more thing. What if, see, I know that slime, to function properly, it requires another component. It requires the NPC component. That is a requirement for all of my enemies. It requires that component. So how can I make sure that no matter what, when I'm building my enemies or my other objects, that this component always comes with that component? One way I can handle that is I can do require components. And it's gonna take an attribute of type of, we're defining the type of component that it is. And in this case, it's going to be NPC. It's the actual class, the actual component the script file is going to be attached to this object. So one thing I can do now, just to test this, is go back into Unity. Notice it already has it on there because I know it's required, right? So what I'm gonna do though, is I'm gonna remove it, and then it says I cannot because it depends on it, right? That's pretty cool. But what if I were to go ahead and remove slime, and then I could remove this because slime is longer there, so it's not required. And then I take slime and add it. It adds NPC and slime. It adds them both because slime requires NPC. That's pretty handy. You can you can prevent a lot of confusions and errors by doing that right there. Another good one is let's say that current health it has to be public because things are accessing it outside of itself, right? It has to be publicly available. Maybe not in this exact sense, but in this case, it is publicly available to uh, expose it to the inspector for this example. So. What if I want it to be publicly available via code, but not publicly available to edit in the inspector or even be visible in the inspector? One thing I can do is tag it with an attribute that is hide in inspector, and it would just completely remove it from the inspector because everything that's public is exposed to the inspector for that component. So if I hide it and I go into Unity now, I can no longer edit current health, which is good because current health should be driven by code. So it goes away. That's pretty cool. Notice, however, that stats also went away. That's because it's being added to current health, but then current health is being hidden. 
So I take this down here and add it to power. You'll get what you expect. Another awesome attribute that you can be using is execute in edit mode. This attribute takes anything that it's defined for and executes it as it says while still in edit mode. So you don't have to be running the game. The code will still be running, right? It'll be running as the editor is running. It'll be running. So what I can do is for this camera controller, I can define it as it should be running in edit mode. And that way, anything inside of this camera controller component will be executing. So it'll be following the player around and I'll still be able to do the things that this code is letting me, even though I'm not playing the game. So I'm going to do execute in edit mode. I'm going to go into Unity. And when it compiles, you'll see my camera snap into place. And what that means is I can actually use the camera controller. Notice it snapped into place. That's pretty cool. So now if I take my player and I move him around, the camera is tracking him as he does in play mode. So that's pretty cool. All right, so this next one is pretty cool. I can add an attribute to this method to allow me to access it from the toolbar in Unity. So I can actually click on a button in the toolbar up top in the drop down menu and it will execute this method for me. Notice that this method is a static method and all it's doing is giving my player a sword. It's just an example. You can make it do anything. Give yourself all your lives, um, put you at the last level so you can test certain levels, change levels, reset your inventory, give you all the items, give you incredible stats, whatever you want to do, make you any kind of level. You can do anything for testing. It's, it's great for testing your game. No one wants to go through and have to change values every time they want to test something. You can just go up here, click a button, and it will do it for you. So to show you this, it's through the Unity Editor namespace because this is mostly used whenever you're working in building your own editors and creating windows and stuff like that. And it's called Menu Item. It's going to allow me to define a submenu or create my own. In this case, I'm going to create my own because it would be for my own usage. So I don't have to worry about anybody else getting cluttered up with my, with my menu items. But this is going to be called Tools which is a very common menu to create in Unity. And I'm just going to call it Give Sword. So Tools is the top level menu. And now this is the name of the button that I'll be clicking on in that menu. But I can also add another one, Do It. And now Sword, Give Sword, is another menu that goes to Do It. So I'll show you this way. If I go back into Unity, and I go up to the toolbar, notice I have Tools. Click on tools, I have give sword, and then I have do it. Okay, so I'm gonna test this in game just to show that it's working. Gonna hit I to show my inventory. Now I go down to the bottom, I have a great staff there. Now if I go to tools and give sword and do it, notice it created the sword at the bottom, just like you would expect. That's pretty cool, and you can use this for anything, like I was saying, for any kind of tool you want to create. Another one I wanna show you is the system.obsolete attribute this is not specific to unity it's a net attribute and it allows you to define a method or something as obsolete and i'll show you what this does and why it's important right now so let's say this give item method let's say i created a new method for give item this one's an old way to do it but i'm working in the team i have a, a huge code base it wouldn't make sense to go back through and refactor everything to work with this new method right off the bat, right? It'd, it'd be great if I could slowly go through and find everything without it breaking everything immediately. So what I can do is I can create another method and we can start using it slowly and start finding out how it works. And I'll just call it um, add item or something like that. It's a whole different method. It does different things, but it does the same thing just differently. You know what I mean? It does it better or more efficiently or it allows for a different system that we refactored earlier on, anything like that. But the only difference is this one logs out in this case, this one logs out dude. Okay. So that's the only difference. But in my mind, there's a big difference. It just does the same thing differently. If that makes any sense. So what I can do is I can say system dot obsolete, right? And now it can, it can accept a couple of arguments if you want it to or not up to you. I'm going to add in a message. Mine's going to say this, one is old and bad use add item instead okay cool 
So there's that. So now if I were to actually try to use that, notice it gives me a green squiggly lines and it says, hey, give item is obsolete. This one is old and bad. Use add item instead. So that's just a message you give anybody trying to use give item. Notice that give item will still work. It's just it's just a heads up saying, hey, this is obsolete. It might be going away in the future. So for now, maybe try to stay away from using it. You may have come across many things like this in Unity whenever they take things out. They actually phase them out slowly when they introduce new things so that it doesn't break people's code bases. And this is how you do it. You just tag something as obsolete, which is pretty cool. And that's going to be it for this episode of Unity Tips. This was the first episode. I hope you enjoyed it. It's a bit longer than I was actually planning on doing, uh, but I like that I got a bunch of them out of the way, and I'm sure I missed a couple of your favorites. If I did, let me know in the comments below, and maybe we could talk about them over at GoGameGrind.com and go to the forum there. Uh, support the series, uh, this series and the RPG series, either one that you like. It goes to the same place. Support it on Patreon.com slash GameGrind. If you have any questions, again, it's forum.gogamegrind.com. Thank you guys for watching. My name is Austin, and I will see you next time.